All right. Should we go ahead and should we go ahead and get started? So at least on our half of the table, I want to welcome our friends from the school board. Um, we're delighted to spend some time with you all. Um, I know you guys, some of you at least, were at the um, tree lighting or the street light lighting, which Letty was grand marshal at. So that was a great event. Um, but thank you all for coming together. I, before we get started, I did bake some cookies this morning, and I wanted to make sure that uh, we could pass them around. You all have an opportunity to have some of those. Um, but I'm excited to spend some time together. I think it's really been um, an extraordinarily productive time for the school board and the city council together these past years. And um, uh, I think a lot of great things have been either accomplished or set in motion. And so um, I think it's a really unique time in our city's history to have um, improvements done at TJ, major improvements in Mount Daniel, this fantastic new high school underway and on time and on budget, economic development next door, um, going planning wise and great guns. And uh, all the while getting a triple A bond rating um, for the first time last year and the second time this year. So uh, I think we've done some really exciting things together. And, and so I'm just really happy that we're here. And I know two of our Two of you all are leaving, and I just wanted to thank you all, um, at least on behalf of myself, and I imagine on behalf of my colleagues, for the great work you all have done. I've been zealous advocates for our city schools and education, our kids, and uh, you all have done a great job. So, anyway, yeah. Um, I know Mary Beth has a few words she wants to say before she gets started. Um, she did have a root canal this morning. Um, she did, I'm serious. And so she asked if we could keep our meeting to 15 minutes tonight. So um, I would probably a few minutes afterward later, but we'll try. <laughs> All right. So anyway, Mary Beth. Thanks, everybody, for being here. Um, at the Budget and Finance Committee meeting last week, we were talking about all the ways that the schools and city have worked together. And I got this great list um, of some of the things. And then I also have the updated zipper. So this time last year, when we met, we had a zipper of all the things that had to work together so that our high school project and our commercial development piece by piece by piece would come together. So this is an update on it. And if you look at this part, this wave underneath this wavy line is what we had done up through a year ago. And then this wavy line is what we've done in the past year. And then above that line is what we have to look forward to. So it seems like any day now we're going to be able to do that ribbon cutting and zip ourselves up. Uh, but these are some of the things that uh, both staff and city council and school board have worked together on. And there are often questions about how does um, school staff and general government staff work together. And there's some really good answers here. So I just want to read these 11 things. One is that we navigated a successful budget process last year using the spirit of a revenue sharing agreement. We broke ground on the new high school. We completed negotiations of the comprehensive agreement for West Falls Church. We're on the verge of considering and approving the SESP for the Economic Development Project. We jointly successfully worked with our neighbors to strengthen relationships with Fairfax County, Virginia Tech, and WMATA. We jointly negotiated a new EAP provider that's working with both general government and school staff, and that's an employee assistance program provider. Uh, transition to a new pension actuarial services vendor for data and plan verification and 2019 evaluation. There's a life insurance contract RFP and contract award out there and we're working on long-term disability and short-term disability together. Uh, the city staff and school staff submitted a grant application to Dominion for an electric school bus, which is really exciting. We reactivated implementation of new MUNIS for employee self-serve and hiring applicant tracking. <coughs> and we work, worked through some timing and complexities of the FCC TV station design at the New George Mason High School. So those are all sorts of things that happen in public and behind the scenes and really show a strong commitment to working together. So I just want to thank everyone. All right, who we turn it over to next? Is it uh, Ms. Gill or Mr. Noonan, Dr. Noonan? Uh, well, thank you so much for having us tonight. Um, it has been a really great year, and I don't think I can even add to what Mary Beth has said and done because she really has captured um, all of the many projects that we've worked on um, as a team. Um, and I think it's been a great, we've worked together in a really great spirit of collaboration all year long. and. 
although I'm sadly leaving the board, I'm hoping that that spirit continues on um, for the next many, many years in, in perpetuity, as we said at the budget and finance meeting. Um, but I will turn it over to Dr. Noonan. If we're gonna, are we gonna get into the presentation part yet or are we gonna, okay. We'll do the audit first. Okay. Okay, great. Well, thanks again for having us here tonight. So Mr. Shields, do we have our auditors here with us this evening? We do, uh, Mayor Tucker and uh, members of the city council and school board. Uh, we, tonight <laughs> is about planning and about looking ahead to the future. But as we kicked off this meeting, we also celebrated achievements in the past year. And we'll also um, celebrate the audit. Um, <laughs> so, uh, we're very pleased to be joined by Megan Argenbright with Brown and Edwards. And um, Ms. Argenbright and the really um, professional staff of Brown and Edwards do our audit each year. It covers uh, the school board as well as the general government. And so it is, I think, helpful for everybody to meet the auditors by law, the city council has to receive this formal presentation each year. Uh, we've got about um, just an orientation for a couple of minutes on the audit and then questions. Thank you. I'm Megan. Nice to meet you all. Um, I've seen several of your faces here uh, last year at presentation. So it's one time a year that I come and talk to, to all you guys. So um, I won't take up too much time, um, but I will start by saying thank you. Uh, the city and the schools do a tremendous job of preparing for the audit. Um, it's really something that comes on top of all their other responsibilities, their day-to-day -day job, um, and that we swoop in to do an audit um, and kind of throw everything off kilter for a little bit. Um, we send them a thousand emails and ask about just like answer all of them. Um, you know, we have several deliverables um, that we do. There's, you know, the big capper, and that, that's the financial report. That's the important. Uh, one and I will say that we issued a, a clean unmodified opinion so extremely important uh, to have uh, we also do a compliance audit and we had a clean opinion on that as well we uh, as part of your federal awards this year we tested highway planning and did not have any findings um, which is always nice to hear uh, we also perform a state compliance finding with the APA specs as well and that's also in the back of your capper. Um, a couple things to say, if you're only, it, it's a lot of papers, right? It's a lot of pages. Um, and the first couple of, of pages of this, and there's a reason it's at the front, there's a letter of transmittal, and there's also a management's discussion and analysis. And both of these are written um, by the, the city, right? So they're, they're not written, we read them as authors, we read them, um, but they're written by the city and essentially it talks um, in, in very, I mean, it's like five pages, right? So everything that we have in the capper, and they kind of summarize it a bit in those first few pages and say where the city's going, what their plans are. Um, so it's an extremely interesting read about, about where the city has been in the past year and what's coming for the future. Um, the other things that I wanted to point out, because there's a lot of information in there, um, but uh, in the essence of time, I have a couple other deliverables. One we refer to as the management letter. This is the letter on internal controls. There were a couple of new comments. Uh, one was for the schools and approval of payroll. That was mostly just a documentation issue and there was turnover in school payroll. So um, not really surprising when you have turnover in, in positions like that, that people are now juggling more than one responsibility. Um, so I, I fully do expect that comment will go away next year. Um, the next comp is approval of project changes, um, which you guys can all discuss at, at length another time, but um, just mostly talking about following the process of approving um, before purchasing. There were some practical comments on internal controls that are still applicable. Um, some of them are just um, at the schools. It's just the way um, that the staffing is set up, and it's very difficult with a small staff size to fully segregate um, all the and sometimes even though uh, you have three people who can do something as long as they're looking over each other's shoulder, um, which is what's happening, then it's okay, but it's still our responsibility to exploit those things that we see. The last part of that letter, there's like seven, ten pages of what's coming for uh, accounting and other matters. What, what is the government accounting standards for up to? 
Um, there is going to be a pretty big standard in the next two years on leases, and um, we've all been talking with Melissa and Karen about how are we uh, going to implement this and what kind of impact will it have. Um, it's going to be a big deal for, for all local governments, um, kind of how pensions and OPEP kind of rocked things for a little bit. The leases are going to do the same thing. Um, Gatsby's really into putting liabilities on your balance right now. That's just what Gatsby's doing. So, um, so that'll be coming out in the next couple of years. The last thing uh, I want to talk about is the, the third letter, the letter to those charged with governance, which is all of you guys. Um, this is mostly boilerplate, so for those of you who savor and hold on to your, all your, your reports, this one's going to look pretty similar, but that's because it's pretty important. Uh, reiterate every year. For instance, your financial statements have estimates, right? We all know that, but it's worth mentioning that these are estimates. They're based on historic information, actuary information, um, but they are estimates nonetheless. Uh, the next thing, which is pretty impressive to be quite honest, uh, was that we did not, as, as auditors, uh, we did not have any audit adjustments. And I do want to stress that because I have a lot of clients and I had two this year that didn't have audit adjustments. So it's a really big deal. Um, it, it's, you know, we come in and we look at everything. Um, you know, we, we do a risk-based approach certainly, but um, something certainly to pat your, yourself, finance departments, and um, really the whole city on the back for not um, or uncorrected adjustments. Either. So um, attached to the back of that letter is about pages of management representations. So as I said, when we come in here, we're asking lots of questions um, and we don't stop. But essentially this letter is really reiterating and reassuring that everything that we were told and questions that we asked uh, were all valid and accurate to the best of management's knowledge. So that letter, we, we do not issue our report without that letter being signed. And it's signed by schools and also signed by the city. Um, so again, that's why it's so, it's so nice to have a school board here because a lot of times I don't get to present to a school board and you are a very large part of the CAFR as well. So um, that letter is signed by both, both city and schools. So any questions? All right, thank you very much. Before we move on, maybe we can start with school board if you have any questions. Um, Mr. Z is ill and wasn't able to make it with us tonight, so I just wanted to make that announcement. But would you like to start with your question or comments on your side? Any uh, questions or comments from the board? All right, how about city council? Ms. Hart? Thank you for the update. Um, so I can't admit to reading the whole thing, but for the pages I did read, <laughs> um, on page 4J in the management discussion analysis, I think it's probably more of a question for Mr. Shields. Um, so as expected, I think we expected um, every department to have increase in spending. Um, I did note that public safety and public works, which I think given our concerns over traffic calming and stormwater and other things that fall in those areas and police enforcement, um, the spending was actually decreased in FY19 versus 18. Is that due to underspending in those departments or were there other reasons why we actually spent less than we thought? Um, so for both, the, the budgets did increase and so the spending uh, was underspending, as you know, and uh, that's principally due to vacancies. And in this fiscal year, Public Works, if you recall, we had a lot of transition in um, engineering and in other parts of Public Works, but engineering is kind of where it was most acute. Those positions have all been filled since. Um, and that is a portion of what you all talk about the year-end underspending. Those two departments were significant contributors to it. Um, IT is another area where we uh, had vacancy savings. Um, so that's a response. And then on page 4B, um, there was a comment about how spending exceeded revenues this year, primarily by using proceeds from debt issuance in prior years. Um, so normally, we don't want to spend more than we have, but the fact that we're able to spend based on issues from prior years makes it okay. Is this a risk that we think we have for future years? Well, um, it, it, so the majority of that would have been the city hall project. That was debt that was issued um, several years ago. And so we, pulled, we 
to spend it now this year. Um, that will happen again with the school project, probably very significantly. We issued all the 